with your music? Good morning, everybody. Let's go, everybody. Good morning. Woo. Please join in singing hymn number 607. Sing a new song, number 607. Please sing with us. Spirit. Amen. May God's love be with you all. Yes. My brothers and sisters, we gather together this morning in prayer and praise of God. Uh, we pray, it says, the intention for Mass is on their 57th wedding anniversary, Jim and Judy Cagney. Yay! <laughs> <Woo -hoo -hoo. laughs> I married a cute couple yesterday, on uh, Friday at Niagara University, and I'm thinking, 57 years to go, you know? <laughs> so, oh, that's so congratulations to you and thank you for your, for your constant presence to our community. And we gather together, we, we pray for you. We pray for all the needs of our community, all those in the hospital, uh, those, today I'm mentioning in my homily, a young child who is uh, declining in, in hospice now, I think she's nine years old, so um, I'll talk about her in my homily. And also, um, I pray for all those who have surgery this week, for those expecting children, for those uh, people who watch over us, uh, watch over us quietly, the, our police and our, all of the people who serve us, public servants, and all those people we pray. Uh, and, and on this weekend of, <laughs> on this weekend of the 4th of July, uh, that, uh, that tongue-in-cheek Arctic, that tongue-in-cheek presentation called the Declaration of Independence, that all men are created equal. We still haven't gotten up there yet, so we're still working on it, uh, thanks to uh, a number of things that have happened recently. So 
that we can pray yeah. that our country, which started with such extraordinary optimism, extraordinary strength, uh, has, has gotten so divided now because of a whole lot of reasons, which if you want to know about, you could sign and take a course in the University of Buffalo or Canisius College or one of the colleges to find out what happened. So anyway, I was disappointed. My New York Times this morning didn't have the book section. I, it's the first thing I read in the paper. So, uh, or the, or the uh, magazine, and I always just read the recipe. That's the first thing I read. <laughs> so let us be called to mind our sins. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray, O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light. Grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us be attentive to God's holy word. <coughs> A reading from the second book of Kings. One day, Elisha came to Shunem, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp, so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. Sometime later, Alicia arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Alicia asked, can something be done for her? His servant Gehazi answered, yes, she has no son and her husband is getting on in years. Alicia said, call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Alicia promised, this time next year, you will be fondling a baby son. The word of the Lord. second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead 
by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, whoever loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever loves son and daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me. Whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Whoever receives a righteous one because he is righteous will receive a righteous man's reward. Whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink because the little one is a disciple. Amen, I say to you, he will not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I struggle when I read the, uh, the Gospel. Whoever, whoever loves the son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Uh, so let me see if I can figure that out. <coughs> This is the end of Jesus' advice to the disciples as they're going off to, to preach the gospel. I received a text recently from someone out of town. I get a lot of those texts. They always come at 7.45 in the morning, my texts. <laughs> <laughs> All texts. Maybe there's a thing out there that only lets them come. And it's a prayer for a girl named Gracie. Gracie. And it says she's no longer able to be treated because she has a problem, a tumor in her brain that's metastasized to her men meninges, and she can only be, she can only be, she's going home to hospice, and they will take care of her. She's going home to be with her, her brother and her sister and her parents. And at the end of it, it said, at the end of that text, it said, we have to uh, remind one another that we have to love one another, and that's this person had been a teacher. She said, I'm the teacher now, and I'm teaching you. And she's writing, I think, to her kids and family. She said, I want to teach you that we have to love one another and care for one another more deeply. Uh, her, her name was Grace. So I think I was thinking about that. Do they love that child more than they love God? Or probably, I would guess, yeah. I was talking to a man the other day who just had a baby eight or nine months ago, and he said, I saw, I, this guy's very bright, very bright fellow, very bright, knows a lot of theology. I'm amazed to, to, to hear him whenever he talks. He knows a lot of theology. He said, I, I looked into the, my baby's eyes the other day, and I thought, God would never condemn anyone God because God is because God is love and God loves this this young man love his daughter his child more than he loves God 
I guess, I would guess not. And I think what that means is that that's how much God loves us, the way we love Gracie or this man loves his daughter, or you love your wife after, 50, after 57 years. <laughs> I, I told you this story. I, 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 maybe I mentioned this at Mass. I was with uh, some people recently. Uh, maybe I mentioned this at Mass last week, and, and uh, they, there were a couple of people that had this older couple for dinner. They were married 67 years, something like that. And uh, one of the young people at the table says, well, what do you, what do you hold... I mean, you know, they, they were married 65 years. They're kind of frumpy and old, he said. They were kind of frumpy, you know. And, and the, the, the man was holding his wife's hand. He said, what are you holding her hand so tenderly for? She's my bride, Father. <laughs> so, so <laughs> and I think that's, that's, so, that's what Jesus is telling us about, is that, is that as much as you love one another, as much as this baby is loved, as much as we miss those who have gone before us, I, I would think of the, of the my people in my own family. Uh, that uh, that uh, that's what that's what the message is. That's what Jesus is trying to tell us. As much as you love your kids, as much as you love one another, as much as your kids love you, it doesn't say they love father or mother more than me. Then that, then that's how much God loves us. We don't think of God that way. That's the nonsense of, the, of religion. We don't think of God that way. And that's what I think this God, that's the message that Jesus has preached, wants his disciples to preach. How much, you love, how much you love your daughter, how much you love your son, how much you love your husband, how much you love, God loves you even more than that. I have friends who are going off now to study canon law. It's because we're on TV, I won't say what I think. But, but why don't people study canon love? Canon love. Because canon law, I'm sorry for the lawyers here present, uh, but uh, some, sometimes we have to think, are we doing the loving thing? I think of people who have, who, have, who have had failures in their lives, failures in their marriage, failures in their, in their lives, and be, have somehow led to being separated and divorced, and they fall in love again. They fell in love again. There's that word, love. They fall in love again, but they can't get an annulment because canon law per, per, forbids those kinds. There's catches. Maybe, lawyer, maybe some of you lawyers know better. Maybe professors know better. But we find these catches. We find these catches. Is that the loving thing to do? I'm really convinced, I must tell you, that I... Uh, um, we have to get there. I, we have to, I mean, I'm thinking maybe even, that's outside of my, I was thinking maybe when I retire, I'll go to law school. <laughs> <laughs> go to love school, that's it. Anyway, uh, but uh, I, I wonder, I'm just thinking the, the decisions of the courts this week. Was that the loving thing to do, or do they catch, they find a little niche? and maybe make a decision that's based not on love, but on, on law. And in, in, St. Paul says in his extraordinary letters that love is above the law. Love is above the law. So I think that uh, we forget that. And we, did, we forget it because we've institutionalized virtue. You can't institutionalize love. Love is only immediate. Love is... Love is tomorrow's picnic, you know. Love is Tuesday's barbecue. But love is only concrete. I don't, I'm not sure. I don't think it's, it's uh, general. I, I, it can be generalized. It can only be, and we do that in, take nice look, look around this room. There's a lot of love I go see. I don't just see it, I feel it. You can feel it. And I think that's the, that's the, uh, that's the message of Jesus. He's not telling us that we should love our God more. He's just telling us the love that God has for us is even more than my love for people I love or parents' love for their kids or these poor young couple that uh, is, is loving Gra Gracie to the end. So I think that's what it's all about. Let's try to do that. Let's try to see this in the... Uh, and the, uh, this, this road to renewal that we have in the church today, it's, it's kind of 
very complicated and I think very messy, but we have to try to find the loving answer. And I think we have to tell the loving answer to those who make those decisions. And I think that we have to, uh, we have to, uh, be, be, be st stick to it, stick to it. Uh, I mean, that, that stick to it. And you will be persecuted. Chesterton has a wonderful, I was thinking of Chesterton today. Uh, uh, Chesterton has this wonderful, if you're going to be a disciple of Jesus, you're going to be persecuted. Whoever does not take up his cross, you're going to be persecuted for that. But uh -huh, it goes with the program. One other thing I was going to say, I forgot what it was, though. I should have written it down. Must have been a lie, my mother would say, if you forgot it. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so uh, uh, this is a wonderful weekend. So let's pray for that we can be a better country on this Fourth uh, of July. Not just when we talk, when we have those wonderful, good food that we have in the next couple of days. Those unhealthy foods. <laughs> pray for our cardiologist. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, so as I said on Corpus Christi. Uh, we gather together to, so that we can, we can not just receive the Eucharist, but that we can have this meal. And when you think of the next couple of days of meals that you'll have with those you love, uh, think of what we're called to in our daily lives. I think that's really, really important. Oh, one other thing, just to, I, when you read the first reading, I, I, I read this reading before. You know, this is a sad story about uh, the, the woman of influence. She doesn't have a name. Isn't that interesting? She doesn't have a name in the book of Judges here. Uh, but she was, she was hospitable. She was hospitable. The woman made the decision in this case. We don't know the husband's name. And, and Alicia, who was hosted by this late lady, said uh, they, built, they built an extra room in the house. I'm thinking of Father Sile. We have to make sure we have a room for him and a little room and a little room on the roof and furnish him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp. <laughs> We're going to try to do that. And, uh, but hospitality. She's not rewarded. Be There's another person who gets promised she's going to have a baby, Sarah. But that was because of her faith. This lady was promised that she was going to have a baby because she opened her door. That's what it's really all about. And I think we should reflect that in our in our in our constitutional in our in our refugee problem and our in our way to welcome people. So we should. She was she was promised that she would have a baby, and and because she was hospitable. Wow. So anyway, hospitable to Father Sile and everybody that comes to the door. Let us pray. Oh. <laughs> For God's holy people, the church that we may open our hearts, open our minds, open our doors. I understand the Pope just has re appointed some, somebody to uh, take over the doctrine of the faith. The whole Rome, that's the one who, pers who, burns, who persecutes theologians, so we pray that he might be merciful. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our country on this Independence Day. We pray for our neighbor into the north. Yesterday was Canada Day. We pray for the difficulties they have there as well. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray to the Lord for uh, in celebration with Jim and Judy today and for all those who, who are celebrating anniversaries of marriage that they may continue to be loving and they may show others love and generosity. We pray to the Lord. We pray for Mark and Deanna, the couple that was married uh, on Friday, that they can have 57 years. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are sick, for those in recovery. We pray for Gracie and her family as she is being put into hospice at nine years old. We pray for Donna Henning, who broke her leg seriously and, and is recovering. And we pray for, for her husband, Dave, as well. We pray for them. Thanksgiving for their witness, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear for travelers on this busy week, uh, holiday weekend, for their safety, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear Anybody else's? For good weather, we have weather problems around the country this, this week, so we pray for those who are severely inconvenienced by the weather, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear Anyone else's prayers? Special intention, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer.
Lord, hear our prayer. We pray to the Lord. For all the high school graduates this, this week and last week, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask you to hear all our prayers today and always through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please join in singing hymn number 777, Here I Am, Lord, number 777 <coughs> in your books. God, who graciously accomplish the effects of your mysteries, grant we pray that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, for you have given us Christ as our Lord and Redeemer who always showed compassion, love, for children for the poor for the sick for the sinner he became a neighbor to the afflicted to the oppressed he announced to the world that you are our father and you care for all of your sons and daughters and so we praise you and we sing the hymn of your glory
the fountain, the source of all life and all holiness, let your spirit come upon these our gifts of bread and wine so that they become for us the body and blood of Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, Jesus took bread and praised you, the God of all creation. He broke the bread and gave it to the disciples and said to them, take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body broken for you. Do this in memory of me. Supper ended, Jesus took a cup of wine. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to the disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you count us worthy to stand in your presence and to serve you. And may all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the whole world. Make us grow in love together with Francis, our Pope, Mike Fisher, our Bishop, all the bishops of the world that are represented in our global university family. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all of those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on all of us, we pray, that with Mary, the mother of God, the apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus, for, <laughs> together, through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray the words Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and grant us peace. Keep us free from selfishness and sin. Protect us from all anxiety so that we may discover that we are free to wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to the apostles, peace, peace is my gift. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church and grant us the peace and the unity of the kingdom where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. With your spirit. Let us now offer each other a sign of peace. Peace, 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 peace. Peace. peace.
God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter, but only to say the word of the soul. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to the gift of everlasting life. Amen. As we come to the altar for communion, please join in singing hymn number 932 in your books, One Bread, One Body, number 932. Okay, a few announcements. The office uh, will be closed this Tuesday, July 4th. Please see Josh if you're interested in advertising in the digital version of our newsletter. Um, the Cover Girls Book Club, the Men's Club, and the Senior Group all meet next week. 
See the newsletter for where and when. Both our Mommy and Me group and our Young Families group are on summer break. During the summer, join us for Mass on the Grass. The next Mass on the Grass is July 16th at 10.30. The Ladies First Jazz Band is in concert at the Newman Center on July 16th at 3. Tickets are $15. And thank you to everyone who has donated to this year's Catholic Charities campaign. The Newman Center exceeded our goal. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks to your generosity, many of our friends in need in Western New York will receive the help they need. Next, next Sunday. Next Sunday, July 9th, at 10 a.m., we'll be celebrating Father Pat's last Mass here as our pastor. It will be celebrated at 10 a.m. outside, weather permitting, so please bring a chair or a blanket. There will be chairs outside, but we expect a large crowd. Following the Mass, there will be a reception with light refreshments, a gift table, and a basket for cards will be available. Parking will be limited with the side parking lot closed off, so consider leaving the front parking lot for those who are, would find walking difficult. There will be a, there will be a five o'clock mass on Saturday, but we encourage everyone and as many people as possible to attend on Sunday, July 9th at 10 a.m. and show our love and support and gratitude for Father Pat's long years of service. At Father Pat's request, this will be the only celebration of retirement. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Kathleen, wonderful. Good morning. I'm Kathleen Delaney. Um, we're going to need some additional help on Sunday morning for the celebration of Father Pat. Um, and so we'll need a little bit of help in the kitchen around 8.30. Uh, and then some people to, to help outside as well uh, after the 10 o'clock mass so that we can get coffee, tea, juice, breakfast, little breakfast things outside. So um, I'll be at the side door. Jen Schneider back here will be at the front door. And if you can spare a little time on Sunday morning, um, it's not hard work. Uh, just you know, see one of us, and we'll, we'll get in touch with you later this week. So thanks. Thanks, Kathleen. Thank you for that uh, wonderful generosity. I'm tempted to fly away on Saturday night somewhere. <laughs> but I, 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 not really. I, I, very difficult for me. Uh, let's see. Uh, one other thing. Uh, if anybody has a sewing machine or uh, something, Father Jack was here for confirmation. Finds things wrong all the time with me. Is that what it's like, marriage, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, anyway, uh, so Father Jack doesn't like this looking into these boxes at Mass, so, I, so uh, if we need to have something like a, cr a, 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 a cloth or something, but John Blurch, the one and only John Blurch, has installed a curtain rod here. So if anybody has a sewing machine or or any artistic ability to, to, uh, to look at this, to look at this and see what could be done. It probably is very, I don't know how to sew uh, with a sewing machine, so I, and I don't have a sewing machine. <laughs> and I'm not gonna buy a sewing machine. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, just take a look at this and see me after mass. Let us pray. <laughs> Everybody have a great holiday. We, we're so blessed we have two days to celebrate, uh, really, in a way, so. <clears throat> It's wonderful. May this divine sacrifice we have, we have offered and received with, fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting love we may bear that fair fruit that lasts through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a great day, everybody. Please join in singing America the Beautiful, number 984 in your books. <laughs>